Excuse me, sir. Quick question for you, man. Is, is this your Lamborghini? Yeah, it is. What do you do for a living, man? How are you able to afford a Lamborghini out in Los Angeles? Finance. So I'm in private equity. I went into the entertainment industry full on. I have some of the highest paid people that have ever made the biggest network deals in reality TV. I own a law firm in Los Angeles. What's been the most amount of money that you've ever generated in a single year? Yeah. Multiple millions, yeah. yeah. Oh, over five million. <laughs> well, we're not gonna say that number, but it's in the millions. Back in 2017 or 18, they told me they don't even use my figures because I was doing more business than anyone in Beverly Hills. I have over $20 million in cars now, and it doesn't even matter. I, I'd rather drive a Kia and be your age again. What has been the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? Los Angeles is the number six city in the entire world with the most millionaires. Today, we're gonna to be going all over the entire city asking these multimillionaires how they created their wealth and how you can start your path to becoming financially free in 2023. What industry did you decide to pursue a career in? Finance, so I'm in private equity. And what was the turning point like getting into that business? Did you always know that you were gonna do that? or No, how did no, you... no, it was pretty scary. I spent probably about six years in isolation to break into investment banking. Grew up homeless, first generation college student. Dad left when I was two. At the turning point when I was 18, my mom actually had some, some mental struggles and battles with suicide. And I decided that I wanted to roll up my sleeves and go play with the big boys. And so I graduated from the number one business school in the world, Wharton. Now I'm in finance doing private equity and it's been a dream come true. That's incredible, man. Yeah. Seriously. So let me ask you this. As someone who's in private equity, right? When it comes to the way that people look at money, what would you say is the number one thing that separates the middle class and those who end up really acquiring and building that wealth? Risk aversion. If you look at the top Forbes list, like the top 500, about 83% of that list, they were willing to go to negative 3 million before hitting it big. And so the risk appetite to actually kick it up to the next level, I think is something that a lot of people need to take into perspective when they say, you know, I want to win. What's been the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? Yeah. Multiple millions. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is the best financial advice that you ever received throughout your lifetime. Bet big and lose early. Don't worry about how much money you're making on a single transaction or a single investment. In your younger years, it's all about developing a playbook. And so you got to be willing to lose just as bad as you're willing to win. When you take L's, it's not about like the L itself. It's like, how can I adjust my playbook so I never have to take the L again? If you do that, you'll have a lot more wins. Great interview, man. You crushed that. Seriously, man, I appreciate you. That has got to be one of the most wholesome interviews that I've ever done. He went from living in poverty and being homeless to creating millions of dollars worth of wealth in the private equity industry and I love what he said the most successful people are willing to risk it all to be successful and create millions of dollars in wealth that's the only way you're gonna be able to make it shout out to him gave a great interview and let's go get this next one what industry did you decide to pursue a career in? well I'm not gonna tell you the industry that I was in I'm just gonna tell you that in order to be successful in life especially in this country opportunity when someone gives you the opportunity take it and run with it nobody dies from hard work and nobody dies from working 16 18 hours a day seven when I was young, your age, I wanted to have a Lamborghini. And I thought that was going to be the greatest thing, achievement I'll ever have. I have over $20 million in cars now, and it doesn't even matter. I, I'd rather drive a Kia and be your age again, because now I can be the President of the United States and beyond. Young people like you, be grateful, work hard, set your goals high. Last thing I'm going to tell you, school is fantastic, but it's only a tool. It's not the ends to all. However, if you're going to study anything, study finance and study law, not because of anything other than if if you understand numbers, that is the universal language of the world because you can just sit in your office and figure everything out with just numbers. Law, not to be a lawyer. God forbid anybody be a lawyer or a doctor. Don't be any of those things. That's for ordinary people. What types of businesses did you run? Like were you in real estate or like what? Manufacturing. Manufacturing. But if I was to do it again, I wouldn't do manufacturing. It's a lot of work 24 seven and a lot of responsibility. And now I can only imagine if I was your age and just knew what I was doing, I was just telling my friend I could be homeless today right here at 18 and I, I could be the Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk and Bill Gates combined and buy 15 Warren Buffetts because the opportunity is there for you to go after it. It really is and it's that easy and people that think oh my god I'm not lucky I don't have this I wasn't given that or bullshit. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that. Have a great day. Alright you, so you guys that was an absolutely insane interview. That guy has companies that have generated hundreds of millions of dollars in the manufacturing industry. We stopped him on the corner in Beverly Hills to get a quick interview and ask him for his advice for all the entrepreneurs out there. Gave some great game, but let's keep this LA video rolling and go get this next one. All right, you guys, we are on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills, Los Angeles at Peter Marco, but we're about to interview Peter Marco. He's the owner of this company. This is a nine, nearly 10 figure business, and he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. 
business. We're going to ask him the secret to creating wealth as a business owner in one of the most competitive cities in the entire world. Let's see what he has to say. What industry did you decide to pursue a career in? Topless dancing, but I failed. So used to be a male dancer. Then that didn't work. So I figured I'd get involved in the jewelry business. That's a joke, by the way. How long have you been an entrepreneur for? So I, I started in the jewelry business when I was about 15 years old. I'm 62 now, so it's been a lifetime career, 47 years. And at 15, you don't really know what you want to be. I grew up in New York and you kind of just go with the flow. Things were like falling into place for me and I kind of rolled with it. Where did the passion come from with jewelry? So I am the first one in my family. I came from a single family, no, no father, since I was four years old, grew up on the streets of New York and there was no direction or guidance. I just got a break when I was 15 to clean bathrooms for a jewelry company in Manhattan. And then they hired me to be a messenger boy and then I was promoted to a jeweler and a setter and a polisher. And then I traveled the whole world for them for like 25 years. I did yeah. Europe, Asia, Canada, Cayman Islands, Caribbean, the whole United States with a bag of jewelry worth $3 million. And when you start making money and you're a poor kid, that kind of motivates you and drives you. So I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I wasn't college material. I wasn't school material. I couldn't wait to get out of high school. I barely made it through it. But then you give the guy the football and he runs with it. He doesn't look back. And that's kind of what happened. What has been the most amount of money that you've ever generated in a single year for your company? I wouldn't disclose that. Okay. But we, we um, I will tell you that, humbly speaking, because this is Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills, there's many committees here because of the tourism and everything. They keep record of everything. And back in 2017 or 18, they told me they don't even use my figures because I was doing more business than anyone in Beverly Hills. More than 90% of businesses don't make it past five years. You've had a career in entrepreneurship that's been nearly 40 years. What is the greatest lesson that you've learned that you pass on to someone else? What's worked for me personally, I don't care what your religion is, your culture is. I don't care where you are from anywhere in the world. People want to deal with people who are real. Keep it real. Your word is the only thing you have in this world. All this could be gone tomorrow, but I would make it back because of my honor, my values, my morals. So if you give your word on something, you follow through. Through. You just keep your word and do clean business and people will flock to you because everyone wants to deal with winners. Nobody wants to deal with a shady guy or a loser. Everybody wants to deal with the best and work hard at it. You know, there's a restaurant on the corner that closes 10 or 11 o'clock at night. For years and years, I was the last one to leave this street. I'd leave and the restaurant was closed. What is that telling you? I'm leaving 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. What you put into it, you're going to get out of it. When you see that gymnast and you see that gymnast doing five flips in the air and coming down, they practice. Practice. They live it, they breathe it. And I think what also helps me is it's not a job, it's a passion. I love what I do. And that makes the world of a difference. If you're gonna get up every morning and regret where you gotta go and what you gotta do, you're not gonna be good at it. You know, a guy told me one time, he said, look at that massive ocean. Look at the Pacific Ocean, it's massive. And now you're a little boat out in that ocean. And all that water out there could kill you, but it doesn't. It's only the water that you let in that will take you down. So you just don't let it in. And if it does get in, get rid of it. You've heard the expression, it's like, the Boxer. You know, what do you do with that towel? You can wipe off the sweat and keep going or you can throw the towel in. You wipe it off and you just keep going. And stay true to the people around you and stay true to the people you do business with. Amazing interview, man. Seriously, thank, thank you, you so much. I appreciate oh, that. Man, Peter Marco dropped nothing but absolute heat. One of the most successful business owners in all of Beverly Hills. Gave some great game for all the entrepreneurs out there. One of my favorites I've ever done. Shout out to Peter Marco. Let's go get this next one. Excuse me, sir. Quick question for you, man. Yeah. What do you do for a living right now? I've been an entrepreneur since I was 15. Started my first business in my bedroom and from there sold it a couple years later, did okay with it, and I started mymetalbusinesscard.com. What's the most amount of money that one of your business has generated in a single year? Oh, over five million. You've been an entrepreneur for over 20 years. What's the number one lesson that you've learned that you would pass on to someone who's starting a business in 2023? The sooner you can find great people and delegate, the better off you'll be. I think the fundamental is as an entrepreneur, starting a business, you want to do everything. And in fact, you kind of have to because you can't afford to hire good people. But if you figure out that the good people cost less than doing it yourself, you'll make strides very quickly. You brought up kind of building that team in, right? What do you look for in a business partner when you're assembling a company? That's a great question. There's a book by Patrick Lencioni, The Ideal Team Player, and it goes over three things, humble, smart, and driven. If it's those three things, you're golden. What is your best networking advice for the younger generation out there? How have you been able to build your network, find those relationships in the business world? Do you have a business card on you? A business card? Yeah. I think so. Let me, uh, I got one actually, here you go. Okay, so paper, as expected, it just doesn't stand out. And I think what happens is most people, they look at business cards as an office expense, pens, paper, business cards, but really it's marketing. 
You know, successful people are so busy and they can take you places that money can't. But to get in front of them and to be remembered, there's not anything I can think of that has the impact. You can literally hand somebody a metal business card and without saying a word, start an entire conversation. So final thing, your network literally is your net worth, but you're never gonna make a network if you don't stand out. So this is your business card. That's the metal business card. It's like actual metal. Where can everybody find these? So mymetalbusinesscard.com. And if you use code hard knocks, we're gonna offer 20% off. This is for anybody that wants to stand out and leave a memorable impression. This Los Angeles video has been absolutely insane, but the best is yet to come. So stay tuned and be sure to like and subscribe for amazing content on the way. Let's get back to the interviews. What industry did you decide to pursue a career? In? I went into the entertainment industry, full on agent, manager, TV show creator. So for me, I'm a jack of all trades as an executive in the industry. How did you know that you wanted to go into the entertainment business? Was that always something that you set out to do when you were a kid or? Well, growing up here in Beverly Hills, I was blessed to have a lot of friends whose families were in the business. So for me, I saw it all around me and I basically wanted to follow in the footsteps of a lot of my friends parents who are really famous and really well known and at 15 years old I got a job at Interscope that then turned into a job at uh, UTA and turned into a job of me owning my own management production company and for me I have some precedent setting deals at networks I have some of the highest paid people that have ever made the biggest network deals in reality TV. Right. So the highest paid people on reality shows, those are deals that my company has done. What has been the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? <laughs> well, we're not gonna say that number, but it's in the millions. A lot of people don't have a great idea, they'll start that business. They don't know how to scale and grow it. What's the biggest thing? You well, the should... most important thing is that you have to know your value. So if your idea is great, your product is great, you have to have partners around you and the distribution around you to be able to push it out in the market so that the money goes up and up and up. And that's what we've been able to do. Luckily for me, we're working in media, there's so many networks, so many streamers, so many places to sell to now that you have a lot more opportunity to sell your product. You crushed that, man. Thank you, Seriously, buddy. man. It was absolutely crazy running into David. That is a media mogul. He's closed some of the biggest deals and been the architect behind some of the biggest deals in all of Hollywood entertainment history. It makes sense why we ran into him out in Beverly Hills and Los Angeles, the entertainment capital of the world, but let's keep this video rolling and go get the next one. Hey, excuse me, sir. Quick question for you, man. Is, is this your Lamborghini? Yeah, it is. What do you do for a living, man? How are you able to afford a Lamborghini out in Los Angeles. I own a law firm in Los Angeles. You own a law firm. How long have you been a business owner for? Coming on seven years. What's been the most amount of money that you've ever generated in a single year? <laughs> I think that's uh, attorney client privilege, but several millions of dollars. Several millions of dollars. And we go all over the country asking business owners their advice to young entrepreneurs. Could we ask you a few questions for the channel? Absolutely. Awesome. Let's run it. Did you go to college? I went to UCLA. Do you think a college degree is necessary to be successful in today's society? I think so. I think you should never go cheap on your own education. What would you say is the best financial advice that you've ever received throughout your lifetime? A dollar spent on yourself is a dollar never wasted. Are you a reader by any chance? I do like to read. Do you like to read? What's the number one book recommendation that you have for someone out there? I would say Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. By asking the right questions and communicating properly, you'll be able to get what you want in a deal. You have a Lamborghini out in Los Angeles. For someone who's watching this, what would you say is the best advice that you tell the younger generation today? I would tell them to start a business and right when you start getting some profits, put that right back into advertising and marketing. Brand yourself. Single-handedly, I think branding is the most important thing. That's your identity and your trademark to the public. You could be the best lawyer, you could be the best doctor, you could be the best real estate agent. But unless there's people knocking on your door, unless people know who you are, you're not going to ever be known in this world. So the number one thing is branding, advertising, and marketing. My God, you crushed that. Seriously, bro. Los Angeles was an absolute movie, everyone. It was crazy to make this video, but I want you to like and subscribe for amazing content coming soon. And click here to watch us going all over Miami asking multimillionaire supercar owners how they became wealthy.